In the vast realm of classic cinema, where every frame holds a fragment of history, some films possess an uncanny ability to etch themselves onto the fabric of memory. Picture this, a cozy evening, the screen flickers to life, and you find yourself immersed in the technicolor allure of 1954 seconds Johnny Guitar. The opening chords of the theme pull you in, a gateway to a tale where tension simmers beneath the surface of a western frontier town. Perhaps you recall that first encounter, the way Joan Crawford's fierce independence clashed with Sterling Hayden's brooding presence. The cinematic landscape transforms into a battleground, mirroring the internal conflicts each character wrestles with. Was it the dramatic saloon face-off that stayed with you, a symphony of gunshots and simmering resentment? Or the enigmatic allure of Vienna, Crawford's character, as she navigates a world dominated by men with the tenacity of a desert flower fighting its way through unforgiving soil? As we delve into the heart of the matter, let's journey beyond the surface and unearth some hidden gems about this cinematic masterpiece. Did you know that the film's vibrant color palette was a deliberate departure from the muted tones of traditional westerns? It's these artistic choices that continue to ripple through time, influencing the genre's evolution. And while Johnny Guitar might have been met with mixed reviews upon release, it now stands as a symbol of audacious storytelling, a testament to pushing boundaries and embracing the unexpected. So, dear reader, before we traverse deeper into the realm of facts, take a moment to recall your first rendezvous with Johnny Guitar. What scenes danced vividly in your mind? What emotions did the film stir within you? As we unveil the lesser-known facets of this classic, let's honor those initial sparks of connection that make cinematic journeys all the more memorable. And now, as the spotlight turns toward the hidden trivia that colors this film's legacy, join me in uncovering the nuances that often escape the casual observer. It's time to lift the curtain on the anecdotes that breathe life into the tale of Johnny Guitar, shedding light on the meticulous craftsmanship and serendipitous moments that contributed to its unique allure. So, buckle up, for we're about to embark on a journey through time and celluloid, exploring the tapestry that is Johnny Guitar. Robert Mitchum's missed opportunity in Johnny Guitar, an unconventional casting tale in the annals of Hollywood lore, the interplay of casting choices often shapes the course of cinematic history. Such is the case with the 1954 film Johnny Guitar, a Western classic that almost starred the charismatic Robert Mitchum as the titular character. However, the wheels of fate turned differently, leaving us with Sterling Hayden in the lead role. RKO, the studio holding Mitchum's contract, hesitated to loan out their prized star, thereby denying him the chance to don cowboy boots and grace the dusty plains alongside Joan Crawford. The role eventually fell to Hayden, whose portrayal added a distinct flavor to the movie. Yet, one can't help but wonder about the alternate universe where Mitchum's smoldering presence collided with the fiery intensity of Crawford's Vienna. The cinematic cosmos continued to weave its intricate threads as the film's reception echoed beyond the screen. Bosley Crowther's critique in the New York Times struck a curious chord, noting that Crawford's character plays essentially the same role played by Van Heflin and Shane. A perceptive observation, shedding light on the gender-neutral nuances of archetypes in the Western genre. Amidst the backdrop of Hollywood intrigue, another enigma emerges, the enigmatic cameo of Dennis Hopper. Rumors abound that Hopper, the maverick talent, graced the set as an uncredited extra. Yet, in an interview, Hopper himself refuted these claims, leaving us to ponder whether the haze of time blurred the edges of memory or if an unassuming extra indeed bore an uncanny resemblance. As celluloid ages, the secrets it harbors can become as tantalizing as the narrative itself. Whether it's Robert Mitchum's near miscasting, the gender dynamics subtly underscored by Crawford's performance, or the enigma of Dennis Hopper's alleged cameo, Johnny Guitar continues to spark conversations, teasing us with its untold tales from the silver screen. In the world of Hollywood, where decisions ripple across time, Johnny Guitar remains a testament to the what ifs and the roads not taken. Roads not taken. Roads not taken. Roads an uncredited genius behind the scenes of Johnny Guitar in the annals of cinema history. 1954 seconds Johnny Guitar stands as an icon of Western filmmaking. Beyond the sweeping landscapes and tense showdowns, this masterpiece harbors a hidden tale of intrigue and collaboration. Though Philip Yordan's name graces the screenwriting credits, the true wordsmith behind the screenplay was Ben Maddow, a casualty of the notorious Hollywood blacklist. Striking a covert deal, Yordan lent his name as a front for Maddow's work, a partnership that saw them split the fee. The silver screen may have obscured Maddow's name, but his narrative prowess remains indelibly etched into the film's fabric. Stepping into the title role was Sterling Hayden, a bold choice for a gunslinging troubadour. Yet, his embodiment of the enigmatic Johnny Guitar left audiences captivated. Curiously, Hayden's talents did not extend to horsemanship or musical prowess. He rode a horse with faltering grace and strummed the guitar with fictional finesse. Such quirks only deepened the layers of his portrayal. Behind the scenes, the production faced its own trials. The cameras rolled for 44 days, an extended timeline surpassing the original plan by 10 days. As detailed by writer Philip Yorton, the venture demanded an investment of approximately $2,500,000 a substantial sum for the era. Every frame carries the weight of these creative challenges, transmuting them into the very essence of the film. 
As reels of film word and dust clouds billowed on screen, Johnny Guitar wove together the tales of its characters and the untold stories behind its creation, a testament to the artistry that emerges from collaboration, innovation, and a dash of Hollywood intrigue. Nicholas Ray's directorial shift from RKO Studios to Johnny Guitar in 1954, the silver screen witnessed a directorial shift that marked a pivotal moment in the career of Nicholas Ray. Emerging from a seven-year contract at RKO Studios, Ray unveiled his cinematic prowess in Johnny Guitar, a film that would come to define his style and storytelling approach. Ray's departure from the confines of RKO Studios was laden with anticipation. Having honed his craft within its walls, he embarked on a new chapter with Johnny Guitar. The film, a unique blend of Western and melodrama, showcased Ray's knack for pushing creative boundaries. The production was not without its quirks, however. One intriguing aspect was the handling of horses during scenes featuring a captivating waterfall. Overcoming equine trepidation, the production team fitted the horses with blinders. The effect was remarkable. The blinders allowed the majestic creatures to conquer their fear, enabling breathtaking shots that remain etched in cinematic memory. A human element of the production also added to the intrigue. Sterling Hayden, a formidable presence on screen, carried a reputation for being challenging to collaborate with. His on-set demeanor was mirrored by none other than Joan Crawford, herself no stranger to Hollywood's complexities. Crawford famously labeled Hayden as the biggest pill in Hollywood, underscoring the clash of personalities that simmered behind the scenes. Johnny Guitar thus not only delivered a compelling narrative on screen but also unraveled a tapestry of off-screen dynamics. Ray's departure from RKO Studios, the ingeniously managed equine sequences, and the clash of formidable personalities all contributed to the film's mystique. As the credits rolled and the audiences marveled at the cinematic canvas before them, little did they know that the narrative extended far beyond what met the eye. Johnny Guitar had etched its mark not only as a genre-defying classic but as a microcosm of the intricate world of filmmaking. Johnny Guitar remains an intriguing enigma in the world of classic cinema, fraught with behind-the-scenes tensions that belie its on-screen allure. A Criterion Collection interview with Sterling Hayden, who portrayed the titular character, exposes his ambivalence towards the film. Hayden, candid and forthright, admitted, they put string, like you get at the grocery store, over my guitar in case I accidentally hit them. I can't play guitar and can't sing a good goddamn either. Hayden's struggle wasn't confined to the music. He faced daytime battles with co-star Joan Crawford and nighttime turmoil with his second wife. Despite his reservations, Hayden couldn't dismiss the film's popularity. Director Nicholas Ray's internal turmoil mirrored the movie's turbulent atmosphere. On several occasions, Ray was forced to halt his morning commute to vomit before arriving on set. These struggles were compounded by the film's frosty reception among American critics upon its release. Despite the public's eventual fascination with the movie's unique blend of Western and melodrama, it seemed the director's agony persisted off-screen. A memorable anecdote adds yet another layer of tension to the mix. Sterling Hayden's exasperation with Joan Crawford's behavior reached its zenith, as he declared, There is not enough money in Hollywood that could lure me into making another picture with Joan Crawford. And I like money. This exclamation, laden with frustration and a hint of humor, underlines the depths of the interpersonal conflicts that simmered during the production. Johnny Guitar, a film of paradoxes and passions, is a testament to the intricate dynamics that can color a cinematic masterpiece. The clash of creative visions, personal animosities, and hidden challenges all converge to shape a Western that defies expectations. Hayden's candid recollections, Ray's unspoken agony, and the Crawford-Hayden rivalry blend to form a narrative that transcends the silver screen, illuminating the intricate dance between art and tumult behind its making, behind its making, behind its making. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the enigmatic landscapes of Johnny Guitar, I invite you to linger a moment longer in the mesmerizing echoes of its tale. As the credits roll and the curtains draw to a close, take a breath and let the essence of Vienna's fierce independence and Johnny's smoldering intensity envelop you. The film, a tapestry of fiery confrontations and lingering glances, has a way of etching itself into the corridors of your mind. Pause for a heartbeat and reflect on the subtle threads that connect you to this captivating narrative. Was it Vienna's unwavering determination that struck a chord within you? Or perhaps it was the tension between loyalty and self-discovery that left an indelible mark on your thoughts? Every viewer, like a wandering soul, finds a unique corner of resonance within the world of Johnny Guitar. Now, I encourage you to share the treasures of your experience. Whether it's the haunting refrains of the soundtrack that still play in the recesses of your memory, or a scene that crystallized your emotions, your reflections are a mosaic that enriches the tapestry of collective appreciation. As we part ways, I extend my gratitude for your time and the curiosity that led you to explore the enigmatic allure of Johnny Guitar. May the film's spirit continue to dance in your thoughts, and may your reflections inspire conversations that traverse time and genres. Thank you for joining me on this journey of cinematic reverie, dear reader. Until our next encounter, keep the reels of imagination spinning. Warmly, 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 warmly.